But first, a few weeks ago in Stamford, Connecticut, about a thousand people got together for one reason, crossword puzzles. The annual American Crossword Puzzle Tournament was founded by New York Times crossword editor Will Shorts, and it attracts the top puzzlers in the country. The tournament got a big boost in visibility with last year's hit documentary, Wordplay. This year's champ for the third time in a row is 22-year-old Chicagoan Tyler Hinman. Tyler, welcome to Chicago Tonight, and congratulations. Thanks a lot. Good to be here. <laughs> Listen, so you won three in a row. How do you prepare for number three after having won one and two? What do you do? Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same year in and year out. I solve a lot of puzzles every day, mostly on the computer, because there's a lot of them I do, and I save ink, and it goes a little faster. Uh, before the tournament, I'll do a few more puzzles on paper, and you know, just get used to that, used to that uh, style again, so I can uh, compete in the tournament. But no special preparations for trying to repeat. Even so, like, you know, like an athlete preparing for a big event, uh, how many crossword puzzles do you work a day? How much time do you spend on it each day? Um, it's around uh, eight right now. It varies a little bit, like on the weekends when a few of the Sunday weekend puzzles appear. Uh, and I have magazines and stuff that I do sometimes, but it's, it's at least that, I'd say. Well, you were one of the stars of the documentary Wordplay, and in it, uh, it shows the, the entire tournament. It shows you working the, uh, working the puzzle at the, uh, in the championship round. What was going through your mind as, as you were doing this? Uh, well, um, at this point, I think I'm, uh, it's, it's kind of the end of the movie here, but at this point, I think I'm, I think I'm second. Uh, but, you know, you're just, you're, it's not like a, a competitive sport like baseball or football where you're actively trying to impede your opponent's progress. You're just uh, solving the puzzle as fast as you can and uh, hoping it's good enough. Why are you wearing those headphones? Um, there's actually commentary from a crossword constructor named Real Regal and uh, Neil Conan from uh, NPR, and they're doing uh, commentary during the A final. It's very, it's very joking. They, you know, make fun of wrong so answers. So that way you can that block it out. You don't yeah, have to listen yeah, you to it. <laughs> okay. Well, you, they discuss answers and things, so you really can't be listening to that. <laughs> you know, I, I was looking at your blog today, and you talk about being in the zone. What does mm -hmm. being in the zone mean when you're working on crossword puzzles? Um, well, fortunately for me, I tend to do my best solving at the tournament. It's just, uh, it, it, I don't know what it is, but it's the competitive aspect, knowing that I'm going for a title. Um, I, ju I just kind of, I kind of get locked in and I really uh, do my best solving where it's just me and the puzzle and I'm not really influenced by uh, anything on the outside. How did you, you're, you're 22 years old, mm -hmm. crossword puzzles are often associated with older people. That's How true. did you get hooked on crossword puzzles? Uh, I've been doing puzzles for a very long time. Uh, the little children's fun puzzles, uh, little rhyming puzzles, that sort of thing. Um, I start, started focusing on the New York Times puzzle in particular uh, in ninth grade. I was bored in a study hall, and my ninth grade history teacher was <laughs> in the study hall and had a big backlog of Times puzzles, so uh, I tried one. And, and is that what got you hooked? Yeah, <laughs> even though I wasn't good at that first one. Well, speaking of New York Times crossword puzzles, we had you, mm -hmm. b before, we, before we went on the air, we had you go to today's, Tuesday's New York Times crossword puzzle to see how long it would take you right. to do that puzzle. And here we have you uh, doing that. First of all, when you first encounter a puzzle, wh wh what, are you, what are you doing right now? Uh, well, I, I looked at the top left, because you know, with the easier puzzles, like on a Tuesday, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to start in the, in the upper left. But um, I, I hit a bit of a log jam, and I had to start um, just, to the, just to the right. Um, today's was a little, uh, a little naughty for me. Um, made, a, made a few mistakes. There were a couple of uh, ambiguous entries that I had, I had to erase, which always uh, Cost you a few seconds. Okay, here we have speeded up the videotape for purposes, purposes okay. of time. But what's right. happening? In, look, you, you're working from top down. Is that how you do it? Uh, I, I just kind of go where the flow of the the flow of the black squares and the answers I have in where they take me. You know, if you have letters and an, uh, and an answer, it's more likely that you're going to be able to come up with the correct uh, correct answer. So uh, that that's kind of what I did. And you know, with a puzzle like this, I really don't want to get bogged down in one area. So for a couple clues. I don't know right away. I'll just move on and uh, come back to them when I have a few letters. So is each crossword puzzle different in terms of how you, what, you improvise your approach depending on the sections of the puzzle where you're doing well? Mm-hmm. Almost missed a letter there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And here you have finished. And how long did it take you in real time? Uh, it was 2.53 in real time, according to the, uh, the official timer we had here. What's, uh, what's the fastest time you've ever done a New York Times crossword puzzle? Uh, the Monday, the easiest puzzle. Um, I think just last week, actually, I set my record at 2.06. 2.06. That's pretty good. And I read that it typically takes you, what, two L stops? To <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had to kind of improvise there. And I'm, I, had, I had the red eye crossword in mind. That's the one I'm usually oh. doing on the train, which is, isn't a very difficult puzzle. But, you know, maybe, maybe by Fullerton, you know, we'll... Well, uh, 
We'll fudge it a little bit there. Hey, do you I'm think not... some people are just more naturally inclined to do well at crossword puzzles? For, for example, I worked on the same puzzle you mm -hmm. did. And I stopped at 23 minutes because I had to get ready for <laughs> had to get ready for the show. But some other people on our staff, you know, it did it in like eight minutes or so. Is there just a natural ability to do it, or does it come with experience and practice? Uh, for me, it came with practice. Um, the first puzzle I did, granted it was a Friday, it was really hard, and I got virtually none of it. Um, the next week, I did the Monday puzzle and was actually successful. So I thought I was getting really good at them, but then I learned that the puzzles get harder as the week progresses. Right, and the, and the hardest puzzle of the week is Saturday. That's right. Uh, but the largest puzzle of the week is yeah. Sunday. It's a common misconception. A lot of people assume that bigger means harder, but um, if you want the hardest puzzle, you go to Saturday. And how long, what's the fastest you've ever done a Sunday New York Times puzzle as the biggest one of the week? I haven't solved the Sunday Times on paper in a long time. I tend to go a little bit more uh, leisurely on the weekends. But uh, I think once on the computer for a 21 by 21 square uh, puzzle, I think I got exactly five minutes once on the Sunday Times. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Now, I understand you have some tips for the rest of us as to how we can improve our ability as puzzlers. So let, let's, take a look at, uh, let's take a look at those tips. First one, of course, is practice, practice, practice. Right. Uh, you challenge yourself with difficult puzzles, so what do you do? You take it up a notch in terms of the tougher ones? Well, yeah, if, um, a lot of people will solve, uh, say, say oh, I, only, I only solve the Monday times because that's the only one I can do. Well, you don't really get better unless you look at some puzzles that are a little bit beyond you. I, even though I couldn't do the Tuesday puzzle, I was still looking at Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and so on. And, you know, I wouldn't get them, but I'd try to look things up or I'd look at the answers the next day and figure out how the clues made sense. And eventually, uh, the exposure just uh, made me better. Okay, I'll read through the, uh, the rest of them real quickly. Uh, if you're stuck, stare. Mm -hmm. Number four, try walking away. And number five, write answers and read clues at the same time. First of all, let's talk. If you're stuck, stare. What does that do for you? It, it's really surprising how much your brain can just continue working on it, even if you don't think you're getting any further. I've stared at puzzles for, for many minutes back when uh, I was still kind of struggling with the later week puzzles. And I, I, would just, I would just keep looking at them and keep trying and look at all the clues and eventually something would pop in and the letter I got from that and another answer would give me that one and it, the whole thing would just collapse. And uh, a couple more, you try walking away, you just walk away from it and come back to it? Yeah, it's the it's, it's, it's same, uh, same token. Your, your brain can continue to work on it even while you're not looking at it. If you walk away and do some preferably non-intellectual activity <laughs> and come back, then sometimes it could fall instantly. I've walked away from a puzzle and 20 minutes later without even thinking about it the answer will just flash in my head and I'll go back and it'll all be done. And when you're competing, you, you write the answers and you read the clues at the same time. You're, you're writing the answer to the previous one and reading the clue for the next? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an important skill to learn. <laughs> uh, with, with this one, uh, with kind of holding the puzzle over for the camera a little bit, I was kind of missing the squares a little bit. You always want to pause to make sure you're actually uh, hitting the squares and that your letters are somewhat legible. But uh, if you can... Uh, if you can read and write at the same time, that's really going to cut down on your time. Tyler, you're uh, a bond trader at the Chicago Board of mm -hmm. Trade. Any skills that overlap between doing crossword puzzles and doing what you do for a living? Uh, I think the same thing that made me persevere and get better at puzzles after being terrible at it first, they're the same things that are going to uh, make me a better bond trader in, uh, in due time. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, obviously, in terms of the skill sets involved, but there's a lot of overlap, too. Um, I got, I got good at these because I, I wanted to get better, and I was, it was a little bit of a competitive streak in there. And it's, a, it's the same thing with trading. You have to want to wanna be better at it and, uh, and, and uh, get the money that's out there. So, Tyler, are you going to go for a four-peat next year? Yeah. yeah. Uh, tournament's moving to uh, Brooklyn, actually. Uh, the size of the tournament has sort of uh, dwarfed the hotel in Connecticut, so uh, it's moving to the, uh, to the bigger venue for next year. Hopefully that won't affect me too much. Well, if you, uh, if you win the four-peat, would you be the first four-time four winner in a row? That, that, yeah, that would, be, uh, that would be a first. Two other people have uh, three-peated, but uh, the four has not yet been achieved. Well, listen, uh, come back next year as the champion, and All right. we'll talk to you again. Hope so. All right, Tyler, thanks very much. Good to have you hey, here. Thanks a lot. And continued 